Hello traders, welcome to another exciting weekly video where we dive deep into the world of gold analysis. And yeah, I know you might be wondering who is this guy and why he's on my screen. Well, a friend of mine told me that it's very important that I make an appearance on my videos and I try to explain to him that this is not the looks of a Hollywood star. And of course, not, not the voice. You're used to the, to, to my boring voice in my previous videos. But anyhow, the good news is in few seconds, I'll be minimized to the bottom of the screen where you could barely see me. Just a quick heads up. I will pop up again at the end of the video asking you to please like, subscribe and share. So now you know. Okay, we have been on a winning streak in most of our past reports and I have a strong feeling that we'll do even better this week. So grab your favorite beverage, get comfortable and let's get down to business of making some serious money. So as usual, from past week, we had the central banks week if you will uh, i counted them there was 34 central banks who took a decision during last week but we were concerned about three of them the us the bank of england and the bank of japan the federal reserve kept the target rate for the federal fund at 22 year high of 5.25, 5 5.5% in its September 2023 20, meeting, following a 25 basis points hike in July and in line with market expectations. I, I wouldn't say in line, I would say partially in line because they were so hawkish. They signaled there could be another hike this year and this what the market was waiting to know was going to happen before year end. The Bank of England held its policy interest rate at 5.25% on September 21st, keeping borrowing costs at the highest level since 2008. It was the first pause in policy tightening in nearly two years. And finally, the bank of the Dovish Bank of the Japan maintained its key short interest rate at minus 0.1% and the 10 year bond yields at around 0% in its September meeting by anonymous vote. Moving on to the fundamental, we already said uh, about the Federal Reserve raising rates. I don't want to repeat myself and waste your time. And what I want to mention here is the dot plot uh, projection indicated the likelihood of one more rate increase in 2023, followed by two cuts in 2024, contingent on closely monitoring economic data. And the Bank of England, I already mentioned this, and the Bank of Japan, I already mentioned this. Now, moving on to the probability for a rate hike in the US, uh, I get the updated interest rate probabilities from cmegroup.com website, and you can search for Fed Watch tool. As you can see in 1st of November, now we are at 73.7%. No change. We are still at 73.7, no change. This is 525 to 550. And the percentage of change is, is at 26.3%. From this column to this column, this is a, uh, an increase of 0.25%. This is the probability, no change, 
73%. Moving on to USD. When examining the USD performance, it's evidence that bears dominated the market on Monday, causing the USD to reach a low point of 105. And there was a back and forth battle between bears and bulls, resulting in price swings between a high of 105.74 and a low of 104.66. Ultimately, the week concluded with strong upward move, as you would expect after the Fed decision, represented by a solid green candlestick, and the USD closed just slightly below the week's high, with a closing price of 105.58, only 0.2 point away from the weekly peak. Analyzing the technical aspects, it's evident that the USD remains in an overbought condition when observing the daily charts, indicating a potential correction might be on the horizon. The Relative Strength Index Stochastic Oscillator, Stochastic Momentum Index, and True Strength Index are all indicating a significantly overbought condition on the daily chart. However, it's worth noting that the SMI oscillator is showing strong upside momentum. The last one at the bottom. So these four are in overbought and this one is showing a strong upside momentum. Continuing our analysis of the USD and focusing on the moving averages, Again, the USD has maintained a very comfortable position above its three widely used moving averages, the 20, the 50, and the 100 days moving averages, since it crossed above them on August 9th. The initial support level provided by the 20-day moving average currently stand at 104.67 which was tested on Wednesday following the first decision when the 20-day moving average was at 104.53 and the low was 104.66. Additionally, when examining the MACD, it's evident that it remains significantly above zero line, but both the MACD and signal line I glue together, hence the histogram is showing no meaningful, meaningful momentum in either, either direction yet. Let me show you the MACD quickly, this, this is what I mean. The, the histogram is the difference between the, the MACD line and the signal line. The signal line, the orange line is the nine day exponential moving average and the blue line is 12 minus 26 exponential moving average. In summary, the analysis of the USD presents several noteworthy observations. Firstly, multiple indicators are signaling that the USD is currently in a state of significant overbought condition. However, center factors However, certain factors are provide, providing short-term support for the currency. Of course, the potential of another rate hike before the end of the year and the fact that the two-year and the 10-year treasury bonds are at multi-year highs, a phenomenon not witnessed since 2006. Looking ahead, there is a possibility of the USD testing the higher reached on March 8 at 105.88 and a successful break above this level could propel the USD to higher values. On the flip side, it's worth noting that the 20-day moving average is expected to act as a barrier to any downward movement. If this level is breached, it could serve as a signal of relief for the bearish sentiment in the market. Okay, now moving on to gold. As we discussed in the previous week's report, there appeared to be a glimmer of optimism for the bulls. 
And this optimism materialized as gold price surge on Monday, reaching a high of 1034. Interestingly, this high was just a hair's breadth above the 50 day moving average. The positive momentum carried into Wednesday, driven by price spike, followed the Federal uh, Reserve decision and gold reached a peak of 1947.48. Again, this peak also exceeded the 100 day moving average, but the enthusiasm was short lived as the price retraced, settling back to the magnetic pull of the 50 day moving average. I'm going to show this chart shortly, so don't go anywhere. This retracement formed yet another shooting star pattern and the week concluding concluded with gold closing at 1930. Sorry, it's 1925.26. This is the type. The downward trend persisted into Thursday, but there was a modest recovery on Friday, ultimately closing the week at 1925.26. Gold is sandwiched between the 50-day moving average and the 20-day moving average, which will be an important zone to watch in the upcoming period. Of course, the, the, the strength of the USD presents a significant hurdle for gold, gold's upward trajectory. And if we look at the weekly chart, it shows that gold is facing ongoing difficulties in crossing above the 20 week moving average since it was breached on June 19th. And the recent price action in gold provides a notable shift in sentiment despite the positive close in the previous week. And the current week's green close tells a different story. You can see this bar, this is called the doji pattern. This pattern suggests that the battle between the two sides is likely to persist into the forthcoming weeks, making it a crucial period to monitor for potential market direction. But there is a glimmer of hope for the gold bulls as indicated by the weekly MACD. While there is evidence of declining bearish momentum in the histogram, it's also noteworthy that both the MACD line and the signal line continue to maintain <coughs> positions above the zero line, suggesting that there may still be some bullish potential in the market in the weeks ahead. Looking at the daily chart, again, it's confined beneath its widely followed moving averages, particularly being capped by the 100 day moving average, which currently stands at 1942.4. And additionally, the week concluded with gold closing just below its 20 day moving average, signaling the possibility of further downside movement potentially targeting the 1910-1900 range, which could serve as significant support level for gold. I'm going to, 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 to mention all the resistances and supports uh, for gold uh, in a bit, so stick around, don't go anywhere. Now regarding the MACD, this week, the situation appears to be quite uncertain. It's a bit of a toss up at the moment, as there are two possible scenarios to consider. It's possible <clears throat> that the bulls are gaining upward momentum, which could result in a more favorable outlook for gold. And on the other hand, the potential for the MACD line to cross <clears throat> below the signal line from above. If this occurs, it could signal a shift in control to the bears, which would introduce a more bearish perspective. So keep an eye on the MACD. Here is the MACD. And uh, these are the moving averages. The blue one is the 20 
days moving average and the black is the 100 days moving average, orange 50 and the white is the 200. Looking at supports and resistances, this is the Bollinger Bands. The upper band at 1946 and the lower at 1906. The gold <coughs> resistance points, the, of course, now we are at this resistance, the 1925, 1926, 1929. <coughs> this was very tough area for gold. And after that, it's 1946 all the way uh, to 1947.5. It must, it must close above these levels to get excited about gold. And from the downside, the 1914, which is the 21st of September low, 1909.9, September low, 1905.9, Bollinger Band, lower band, 1901 September 14 low and 1900 psychological level and then the final support <coughs> that could save the bulls would be the 1888 and 1884.9 50 weeks and August 21 low. Finally moving on to the economic calendar Last week was a very significant one for central banks around the world. As I said, 34 central banks making decisions on their interest rate. And it was indeed a central bank's focused week. Now, this week, it's all about consumer spending. On Wednesday, we have the durable goods higher than expected reading means there is an increase in economic activity and future economic growth. So this is strong USD, weaker gold, and also from a monetary policy perspective, stronger than expected <clears throat> reading may lead to speculation that the Fed will raise interest rates. <clears throat> so this is very important news on Wednesday followed by GDP, same thing, a higher reading would support the USD and the initial jobless claim and the PCE prices, uh, it's on Thursday and Friday. The personal consumption expenditure, it includes all expenditure made by individuals and households on various goods and services. Same concept. Um, the consumer is spending more demand, higher prices, so this is inflation. And um, this is the, the Fed's favorite uh, indicator. So this should be monitored very closely. That's it for now. Please like and share and subscribe to my channel because this is the kind of support I'm looking for. And if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to drop them in the comment section. Good luck everyone and have a wonderful week.